Coming up on Mountain News this morning, a Commonwealth shelter has had problems with overcrowding and people threatening them for not taking in animals. Plus, Kentucky legislation is working on changing how governor's pardons work forever. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfi. The time is 6.30 on Thursday, February 15th. Now let's check in with meteorologist Tim Drawbridge for a look at your forecast this morning. Good morning, Olivia, and good morning, everyone. I was ready to say Olivia's last name for some reason. Anyhow, hey, it's Thursday. We're almost to the weekend, and between now and then, temps will feel good. In fact, this morning doesn't feel too bad. So we look outside our WYMT studios, 34 last check in temperatures around the region. Again, well, first the weather headlines. Good news for Estill County. The Kentucky River continues to recede and will be below an action stage as we head through the afternoon. Next system comes in tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow night. We got to mention the S word. Yes, perhaps some snow. More about that coming up in a few moments. Temps basically in the 30s, some 20s out toward Clintwood and Grundy, also toward Ashland at 27. It's at 32 Irvin and 32 at the London Corbin Airport. All right, clouds have been coming up from the southwest. More clouds as well as you make your way beyond Louisville, where we do see a shower risk from Mindy down toward almost Paducah. And that system may produce a shower for us as we head through the middle and the latter portion of this afternoon. Otherwise, we average out to being partly sunny as we head through your Thursday and forecast highs will top out this afternoon in the upper 50s and close to 60 degrees. How chilly this weekend. Oh, no, no not again, drawbridge. Yeah, 60 to how far of a drop? We'll let you know. First alert, 70 forecast coming up in a few moments. Right now, back to the news desk with Olivia. All right, thank you, Tim. One central Kentucky county is cracking down on animal cruelty. The Estill County Animal Shelter is no stranger to animal abuse and neglect. That's why they're partnering with the sheriff's office and hopes to prevent more heartbreaking cases. Alyssa Williams explains. It was just last week when Estill County Animal Shelter workers were confronted with someone who was threatening to kill seven puppies with a hammer if the shelter didn't take them in. That's a pretty common situation. It's not usually in person and like with a hammer, but over the phone, people will tell us they're going to shoot the dog, they're going to dump the dog, um, they're going to drown it in the river. Um, I would say it's a pretty common um, occurrence that people threaten to kill their dogs if we don't have room for them. The shelter is now partnering with the Estill County Sheriff's Office to combat these situations. Sheriff Chris Flynn says they're dealing with three to five cases at this moment. Uh, here recently, it's been a lot of hoarding type cases, uh, some even meeting the you know definition of the animal cruelty uh, criminal charge. Flynn says his office will be holding pet owners accountable when their pets aren't up to date on certain vaccinations, like their rabies shots. So it's a violation charge that we will cite them to court, uh, and then they'll have to provide uh, proper documentation to the court showing that they got the animals vaccinated. Flynn adds that he realizes a lot of these hoarding cases begin with people who have good intentions to help animals. But he adds all it takes is for those people to reach out for help before it reaches a dangerous point. It's not illegal to have a dog that's not spayed or neutered, but you know those 10 dogs are going to turn to 20. In the long run, you're, you're going to help out the animals by getting them to a shelter to where we can get them rescued and spayed and neutered and to help control the problem. In Estill County, Alyssa Williams, WKYT. A McGoffin County man is facing child sexual exploitation charges. Detectives with the KSP's electronic crime branch arrested 42 year old Kent Simpkins. An investigation was started by KSP once they found Simpkins was uploading sexually explicit pictures of minors to an online social media account. Simpkins was taken to the Big Sandy Regional Detention Center. A Tennessee teenager is behind bars after police say he reportedly shot a man in Middlesboro. Officers were dispatched to Middlesboro ARH Hospital for a gunshot victim last week. According to the citation, a witness told police she and the victim were chased by a man in a Kia Soul after the victim asked her to take him to the hospital. The man in the Kia Soul was 19-year-old Bradley King. King was taken to the Bell County Detention Center. 
A Owen County woman is facing multiple charges after police say she threatened to kill a man. It happened last week when Hazard PD were called to a home on Rowell Street in Perry County. According to the arrest citation, the man told police the woman broke into the home with a pocket knife and threatened to kill him. The citation says 45 year old Marsha Bowling also broke into another home. Bowling was taken to the Kentucky River Regional Jail. In Laurel County, a London man is behind bars after police say he was driving on a DUI suspended license. Deputies with the sheriff's office responded to a two vehicle crash Tuesday night. During an investigation, officials determined 42 year old Gary Solfridge was driving under the influence. Solfridge is facing multiple charges and was taken to the Laurel County Correctional Center. Law enforcement from Knox and Laurel counties have teamed up to bring nine people into custody following a drug bust. Jasa Ingle, Joseph Holt, James Max, Heron, Charles Fields, Eric Wilson, Josh Messer, Larry Tyler Hammonds, Jamerson Cannon, and Tyler Ross were arrested for trafficking in illegal drugs. All nine were taken to the Knox County Detention Center. As February 15th arrives, so does the beginning of spring forest fire season. Along with paying attention to changing weather conditions, it's important to stay fire wise during the season and remove any leaves, debris and firewood from your yard and against your home. This will protect your home if a fire is nearby. State officials say nearly two thirds of all fires in Kentucky are the result of human action. The spring fire season runs through April 30th. During this time, it is illegal to burn anything within 150 feet of the woods or brush between the hours of 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. A recent independent study was released regarding the Kentucky Community and Technical College System. The study outlines the economic impact the system has made on the Commonwealth. The report determined that KCTCS added $3.9 billion in annual income to Kentucky's economy during the 2022-2023 fiscal year. Yesterday, KCTCS President Ryan Corals broke down what this really means for the Commonwealth. That's about 1.6% of the total economy of Kentucky uh, that lies at the feet of our community and technical colleges. And what does that translate into? Well, it means that Kentuckians that go through our programs are making more money. On average, $10,000 more annually if you uh, acquire a degree, whether it's welding, electrician. Coral says this is also a huge driving force for recruiting companies, saying most want to ensure there are trained workers available. In 2019, former Governor Matt Bevin issued more than 600 pardons and communications during his final weeks in office. State lawmakers called for state and federal investigations. That was even backed by Republican Senator Mitch McConnell, who called the actions completely inappropriate. Now, Kentucky lawmakers want to use the past as a learning experience. Senator Chris McDaniel introduced Senate Bill 126. He says he wants more accountability for governors facing election. I think that it is imperative to the foundational issues of justice in the Commonwealth that one individual not be able to short circuit the entirety of a justice system from the front line police officer who makes an arrest to the Supreme Court of the land who in the, a sentence of the condemned to death is the final adjudicator. The bill proposes a constitutional amendment putting the decision in the hands of the voters. Frustrations and concerns were voiced yesterday by a group of superintendents in Kentucky. They are worried if teacher raises are not included in the state budget, Kentucky will start losing ground. Sitting right in the capital city, Franklin County schools have felt the impact of the competitive market. And officials with Estill County school system say they are worried about the effects as well. When it comes to the education that they're getting, uh, I feel like we do a really good job for that. But obviously, if you're getting a million or two less dollars a year on a population our size of about 2,050, that's a million or two million dollars less that I have to spend on my students. While many of them say they appreciate some of the efforts in the proposal, they hope to see some changes to increase guaranteed base seek to push funds through to districts to provide the raises their staff needs.
And a good Thursday morning to you. Temperatures are basically in the 30s across eastern and southern Kentucky. Jackson, though, still holding on to 40. We're in the upper 20s, though, as you cross the state line toward Clintwood and Grundy. And up your way at Ashland, it is 27 degrees. All right, let's go ahead, check out what's going on. Satellite water composite. Again, clouds have been coming up from the southwest the last couple of hours. This system is what we're tracking coming in for the afternoon with clouds coming in from the west and northwest. And as we time everything out, yes, indeed, we average out to being partly sunny. And that shower threat will be pretty much after 3 or 4 o'clock this afternoon. Forecast highs, upper 50s, and close to 60 as we pick up the breeze heading through the afternoon as well. All right, we've got a system to talk about for tomorrow. <laughs> Does it also mean we have to talk about that dreaded snow word? We'll let you know. We'll talk about how cool, how cold it'll be this weekend. Your first alert seven-day forecast coming up in just a few moments. Olivia. Thanks, Tim, and thank you for joining us. The time is now 641, still to come on Mountain News this morning. A deadly shooting in Kansas City. What should have been a moment of celebration?